From the campus studios of Sarland University, this is Ropecast, a lighthearted podcast for learners of English, with Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Hi there, folks, and welcome back to Ropecast, the podcast that has to do with everything on English and the English culture. Hi, Roger. Hello, Peter. How are you doing? Fine. Are you still watching the Olympics? Ah, sure, sure. I love it. I mean, I would watch everything if I had the time. I'd even watch Tug of War if it were still Olympic. Was that Olympic? It was once, yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah, in the early days. Yeah. Uh, that was considered a great sport. So was lacrosse and the one point uh, softball, which is a kind of baseball. That was Olympic. A lot right. of those things were Olympic and they just dropped out. Does that mean that when a new discipline comes in, an old one has to leave? or Basically, I guess, yes, because you can't have the Olympics go on for, I don't know, four or five weeks. Mm. So, for example, beach volleyball is a big thing now Yeah, for the pretty girls, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but, so other sports ha just have to drop out. Yeah. Well, of course, the popularity of sports varies over time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was interested yeah. recently to read something about a sport in the United States, which kind of surprised me. And so I started to check it out. Mm -hmm. Because it seems to be, in origin, a quintessentially English game. And I mean English, not British. Cricket. Oh, I know that. Yeah. I don't understand it. <laughs> it looks a little bit like baseball, but mm -hmm. I... you do have a bat that you hit a ball. Yes, with. you keep hold of the bat, though. You don't throw it down. Ah, oh, okay, okay. But well, let's not get into the differences. What, what interested me was... Um, the United States now has TV channels showing cricket. You're kidding. I'm absolutely serious. Uh -huh. And Di if... It didn't when I lived in the United States. No. Definitely not. Although, strictly speaking, cricket in North America predates baseball. Did you know that? No, no. Because cricket was carried over the Atlantic by the people who emigrated. And since they played cricket, they... Uh, who were English or Brits. Makes sense. They, they continued playing cricket over there as best they could uh -huh, in a different uh -huh. climate. Okay. And I think there is a continuity in cricket right, right. the way through from before the USA existed but they didn't, right down to the present day. Believe me, in the 70s, they weren't. No. They, they didn't show any cricket on but TV. What's really turned things in the US is uh, the amount of recent immigration from Asia. Ah, okay. Especially from Asian countries where cricket is big. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. the number one cricket playing nation in the world is India. Oh, okay. And since it's such a populous country... It Colonial heritage, that. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's going back a bit. <laughs> so I, I checked this out, and I found, yes, there is, um, there is an association in, in the USA okay. to organize cricket and to try to promote the game and mm -hmm. to help players to become world-class. Mm -hmm. And they have leagues, and they play nationally and internationally. Well. Wow. Mm -hmm. And if you take a look at the photographs that go along with all of this, mm -hmm. it's very, very clear that just about all of the active participants are mm -hmm. of Asian or origin. Ah, so okay. this is an American sport. Mm -hmm. These are Americans playing it. Mm -hmm. But either they were born outside of the USA or their parents were. I see. Uh -huh. and, Interesting. Um, it actually says on the website of the association in the U.S., quote, as most players are immigrants from all over the world, cricket is one of the most diverse sports in the U.S. Whoa. Mm -hmm. okay. So it's, I think, culturally, ethnically interesting as well as in terms of the sport itself. Mm -hmm. Are there any other sports like that? I mean, for me, American sports, that's baseball, basketball, football, yeah. period. Well, another surprise to me is that rugby is big in the United States. Rugby. Although somewhat limited to colleges. Mm -hmm. So I think anyone who's gone through college is probably aware mm -hmm. that rugby is played. Again, there is an association. They've mm -hmm. played internationally. They've mm -hmm. done well in international competitions. Mm -hmm. And um, they are known as the Eagles. This is the big U.S. Rugby team. team. Yeah. yeah, or actually a whole series of teams called the Eagles. And this has, there's another parallel with cricket here. It has, if you like, the American cousin, which is American football. Yes, yeah. Although the closest cousin there, it's arguable whether it's rugby or soccer, as the Americans call it, that is 
uh -huh. association for. I mean, there is there are elements, there are elements of, of both, both in rugby. It's probably, yes. cl probably closer to rugby. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. It's interesting, interesting. So popularity of sports changes over time. Um, the other thing that uh, I think is relatively new in the United States, it's now called ultimate. And originally it was ultimate frisbee, but frisbee is a copyrighted name. Uh -huh. So now they just refer to discs. And this okay. throwing of discs is a really big thing in the U.S. Uh, you can sort of earn points and everything. Yeah. So you can have yeah, a competition. Yeah. So our listeners can check these things out for themselves. We'll put some links on our website. Ah, good idea. But I would uh, like to finish with uh -huh. the, the UK, my mm -hmm. own country. Mm -hmm. um, ever since the Beijing Olympics, mm -hmm. cycling has gained in popularity. I think success internationally can very quickly influence the level of interest in a particular sport or discipline. Oh, most definitely, because we have lost interest in tennis ever <laughs> since Boris Becker retired, right. basically. Um, speaking of popularity of sports, I gotta run. I gotta not watch another event oh, on yeah. TV. Okay, we gotta say goodbye. So, bye bye, folks. Uh, tune in next time for another Ropecast. Bye. You've been listening to Ropecast, brought to you by Saarland University, featuring Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Tune in for the next edifying episode on your podcast dial.